Hi, I'm Jerry Jensen, Lieutenant for Sarasota County Fire Department. We're here to talk about engine company extrication. Uh, we'll be discussing Directive 241, and let's get right to it. Upon arrival, you're going to assess the general overall view of the scene. As you arrive, with a three-person engine, one will take fire control. If you take a two-person engine, they are going to take, the officer will take the fire control. Setting the zones initially with fire control is done with an extinguisher. If you need to, you'll lay a, a line on the ground for, for larger fire control. The next portion of the A is to make a scene circle survey. Both firefighters will approach the vehicle. You'll start at the driver's side front fender. The inner circle man will make an assessment of the inside of the passenger's compartment. He will move in a counterclockwise motion. He'll approach the, the vehicle, looking and getting a general impression of the patient, trying to assess C-spine clearance. He'll get an overall general view of the inside of the compartment, any entanglement, those types of injuries. Always assess the trunk as you move around. Those things that we cannot see are those that can hurt us. We always want to open up the trunk. Moving to the passenger side, looking for the number of patients and any hazards that are available to, to have mitigated. He moves on and meets the lieutenant or the acting officer at the front of the vehicle. The second portion of the scene circle survey is the outer circle. The officer or the person that's in charge of the truck will make the large outer circle getting a general overall view of the vehicle. We'll dip down immediately, taking a look under the engine compartment, looking for hazards that would be coming from the engine compartment, fuels, and any type of hazardous materials. An overall view, scanning to the inside and the outside, looking for more patients, looking for other vehicles. Checking underneath again for any types of hazards. Moving quickly to the rear, again they dip down, making sure that there are no hazards underneath the rear, such as the gas tank leaking. And again, scanning to the outside, looking for other victims or other vehicles. Dipping down, again, checking underneath for the hazards. And then meeting back with the inner circle man for a report and an assessment to gauge whether more resources are needed. In balancing the vehicle, we want to make sure that we mitigate any type of roll hazard. So we will want to chalk the wheels front and rear if possible to keep the vehicle from moving. If you have a larger vehicle, you can do what we call a railroad chalk using a 4x4 and a 2x4. Place the 4x4 down, place the 2x4 above, and snap it in. This will keep any vehicle, large or small, from rolling. One of the basic techniques that you'll have to master is building a box crib. Now, you can see that we're using poly cribbing. Um, those of you that have wood cribbing, it's the very same thing. Poly cribbing has a, a few idiosyncrasies that I'll show you here. Poly cribbing is actually notched, which it makes it easier to build a box crib. When you build a box crib, the basic box crib is a base, cross members, and then filling the void either with a 2x4 and then finishing, always finishing, with a wedge. Remember, uncut side to uncut side. We want to put the cut side in to slide it through to finish filling that void. Now you'll also see that I've placed the handles, the rope handles, towards me so that I can control it. When building the box crib underneath a vehicle, we want to get as much surface as possible and as stable of a base as possible underneath the car. We need to assess how much void needs to be filled. You can do this by placing your cribbing. As you can see, two 4x4s or 8 inches is approximately the distance. We know that we want to catch the underframe of the vehicle so that our first set have to be placed perpendicular to the vehicle. We use another piece to push in the initial, setting it up. We've uh, placed the base, the 4x4 base. We're going to attempt to place the 2x2 two two 
in and we can catch that. Place the other two by two in. And again, cut side goes up towards the vehicle, placing the wedge in. Cut side up towards the vehicle and then using another piece, not your hand, snug the wedge in. All right, let's watch this in real time. The firefighters approach, they grab the cribbing. They're gonna see how much of a void they need to fill. So they're gonna grab two four by fours and that looks about right. He's gonna turn it so that the base is at a 90 or parallel to the rocker panel, pushing in with another piece so he doesn't get underneath the vehicle. Placing the outside, laying the two by fours on top of that. And then finally finishing with the wedge with the uncut side to the uncut side, putting the cut side up onto the rocker. You then snug the, the box crib into the vehicle by using another piece of cribbing. Thus stabilizing the vehicle. Next is the step chuck. Firefighters will approach, going underneath one of the pillars, snugs it in, the other one lifts with his legs, sets the step chalk and sets it down. Another way the step chalk can be used is as a wedge. If you turn the step chalk upside down, it then becomes a giant wedge. Part of stabilization of the scene is we know that we're probably going to take a door cut the roof, or do other things to the vehicle to disentangle or unentrap the, uh, the victim. So we're going to have to take windows or glass. Two types of glass in the vehicles. First is tempered glass. You'll find these on the side of the vehicle and many times on the rear of the vehicle. Now with tempered glass, it is under tension. The glass has been heated. All the tension goes to the center of the, the glass. We have on our trucks spring-loaded center punches. They should be in your toolbox. Spring-loaded center punch, very simple. There's a spring in here. As I press in, the hammer hits the end of, of the, the punch and the window is broken by focused energy. To break the glass, we want to make sure that everyone on scene knows that we're breaking glass, so we're going to announce it three times. The first time is an overall declaration to everyone that we're going to be breaking glass. So you say it very loudly. Breaking glass. You then go to the interior of the, the compartment because whoever's doing patient care needs to prep the patient and themselves for the breaking of the glass. So they're going to have to cover the patient. They should be in full PPE on the interior of the of the vehicle if we're going to be moving metal or taking glass. So we make a, a focused statement to the interior of the, the vehicle. Breaking glass. You then wait. Your next move will be when the paramedic clears and says the patient is covered and I am ready for you to take glass. Once they give you the okay, then it's time to take glass. One more large announcement. Taking glass. When you use the spring-loaded center punch, hold it in your dominant hand. Place your body up against the vehicle to stabilize yourself. Take the center punch in two hands, go to the corner of the glass. Press in, and the glass will break. As you can see, it moved to the center. We will break and take the glass out, away from the patient. Out and away from the patient. Why do we stabilize ourselves? Why do we hold the, the center punch with both hands? If we just went up and pushed in, there's a chance that we could continue into the vehicle, injuring ourselves and throwing glass to the interior of the vehicle. So let's watch this in real time. Firefighter approaches. If you can, roll the window down to about an inch above the sill. That way when you break the glass, it falls down into the door. We're unable to take the glass. So we're going to give a general overall yell to everyone that we're going to break glass. Breaking glass. 
We're going to then go to the compartment and tell the paramedic or whoever is giving patient care that we're going to break glass. This gives them enough time. They say, yes, I've got the patient covered. I have my PPE. They'll say, okay, to break glass. You once again announce breaking glass generally. Breaking glass. And then we set ourselves up against the, the car to stabilize. Two hands, push it in, and the glass explodes violently. Firefighter approaches in real time. Breaking glass. Overall. Breaking glass. To the interior, he gets the clear from the paramedic. Breaking glass. So the firefighter approaches the rear window, announces breaking glass. Breaking glass. Says it to the interior. Breaking glass. Waits for the paramedic to give him the okay. He says he's okay, patient's covered. Breaking glass. Third and final time to break glass. The next type of glass that we're going to talk about is laminated safety glass. Now we find that in the windshields and many times in the rear glass. So with the tools that you have in, as an engine company, you can take laminated safety glass a couple of different ways. First type we're going to use is with a crash axe. We're going to make a purchase point. Now, officers, good to carry one of these in your pocket. That way you can tell the, the firefighter what you need to have done and then you can walk away. So Pete, I need a purchase point there. If you could make that for me. So he makes a purchase point. Now he's going to turn the axe the other way and he's going to start chipping away at the windshield. So chip away, short, stroke, controlled. He's just breaking the outer layer of laminated glass. He's gonna go back to the, to the beginning. He's gonna start breaking a little harder and clearing it out. He might have to go two or three times. This next time when he starts at the beginning, it should go all the way through. We wanna have a controlled cut. Now he can stop and use the blade on the crash axe as a saw by pulling up and down. The next tool that you have available to help you in windshield removal is the sawzall or the reciprocating saw. Quick review on the reciprocating saw. Make sure that it's all the way to five on the speed. As you press the trigger, the saw will move faster. The shoe or the foot should be adjusted so that just a small amount of blade is out and exposed. The less that you have intrusion into the passenger's compartment, the less likely you are to have an accident. So I'm gonna hand this to Eric. He's gonna place it into the purchase point and move the saw through and turn the corner and then as he presses the trigger he's going to move the blade through the windshield. When starting the blade back in always go back to the purchase point. Don't try to start it. Eric's going to turn the corner now. Place the saw perpendicular and then push through. Right there, good. On transfer, hand the saw off to your partner on the other side. They'll pick it up. Turning the corner, the other person will come and support the, the glass. and then flip it forward. Flip it forward, there we go. All right, let's do this in real time. The officer will come up, tell the firefighters what he wants. He needs a purchase point just above the rear view mirror. He steps out, the other firefighter comes up, makes a purchase point, moves out of the way, moves out of the way so the next firefighter can come up with the blade and he moves to the opposite side of the vehicle. They do the pass off. The other firefighter supports the windshield.
clearing the saw and flipping the windshield forward. The next portion of the matrix is D, doing the doors, taking the doors off. Uh, engine company operations requires that a simple door removal is well within your parameters. Uh, before we go to do the door, we uh, showed you how to take the windshield and said just to place it on the hood. If you're going to do any door work, you might want to take the windshield and place it underneath the vehicle so it's out of the way. Now, first part of the door work we're going to do is we're going to access the front hinges. And we'll do that by performing what is known as a fender pinch. The first component of a fender pinch is deciding where you're going to place the tool. We're going to use the spreaders. You want to go just at the arc of the wheel well. And so we're going to place the spreaders approximately there. We're going to open them up all the way. And what you want to do is try to anchor on the body side. So we're going to anchor up high and then close, freeze. And as you can see, along the body style line, this is opening up. As he crushes, this will increase. As you can see, we've increased the distance between the fender and the door. That's giving ourselves a purchase point now where we can place the tips close to where the hinges are, where we can have a point of strength to push the fender away. So now that we've made the pinch, we're going to release the spreader. Remember, you might have put it into the second stage. He's going to close the tips up. He's going to come in as high as possible and start spreading. It's going to be somewhat like surgery. So he's going to open and spread, drop it down using gravity, open and spread, drop it down right to where he can push against that hinge. And now he's going to try to rip that fender completely off along the fender style line. I'm going to have to get another bite. But again, we are using a point of strength, or your hinges, as your anchor point. So what we've done is we've reset the tool, placed it up against the hinge so that the arms are now spreading in line and literally ripping the fender off via the bolts. Now this gives us a pretty good view of the fender rail which is located right here. All right, first firefighter comes in, he's going to spread the top of the hinge a little bit so that the person on the cutter is able to see exactly how it opens up. He's going to tunnel his way through just enough to spread the hinge so that we can see where the weakest point of that hinge is. So that's about good. He's going to back off. The person with the cutter is going to come in, open it up all the way, and come in from the top with the controller to the outside. Yes, sir and drop it in as deep as possible. I want to get that jaw as deep as possible into the, the hinge. And we're going to close it up from the top with the jaw as deep as possible in on the hinge. We close it up, letting the tool work to the second stage. Make sure that you see the blades of the cutters pass. And then we open it up and remove the cutter. We're going to close it up. Make sure that you let the tool go to the second stage. Again, second stage is where they build power. As long as the metal is ticking, that usually means it's under compression and we're still cutting. After the top hinge has been cut, 
the man with the cutters clears and we're going to bring the spreaders in to the top of the bottom hinge. We're going to spread to see where the weakest portion of the hinge is at. Now we can accomplish this by getting deeper into the door and spreading close to the hinge. After we can see where the weakness is, he actually pulled it all the way off. This is another way that we can remove the front door is by using the spreader. But as you can see, it's a little more violent. With the door now off both of the hinges, we still have a few little cleanup areas to do. We're going to clear the man with the spreader. The man with the cutter is going to come back. And as you can see, we have a keeper that keeps the door from flopping once it's open, and we have a wiring harness, and we'll be able to cut both of those with one swift move. We open the, the blades up and then close them, taking both. Watch for the blades to pass. And after they've passed, you can clear the tool. As you can see, the door is still attached by the nader pin or the U-bolt or whatever type of safety mechanism it is. To keep the door from, from moving while we're doing the extrication, we can use a little bit of webbing with a girth hitch to retain the door. Once the hinges have been cut, we then can lift the latch, make sure the door is unlocked first. We can lift the latch, roll it off the hinges, and then remove the door from our hot zone back into the warm zone to be pushed back into the cold zone. Remember to always place the doors paint side down. This is in case there's airbags in the door. We've accessed the front door by going hinge side. We're now gonna access the rear door by taking it safety pin side. Whether it's a nader bolt or a U-bolt, it really doesn't matter. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do it with a door pinch. Eric's gonna come up, the spreader's open. He's gonna place it across the handle. He's going to pinch. And as he pinches and crushes, the style line will open up here. Now we want to make sure that we crush all the way and use all 10,500 pounds of our extrication tools. Once he's done, he can release and we can start working on the style line. Now that we have the style line open, let's open it up further. The LT will come in, he's going to place one tip in the interior of the door, squeezing very hard, going to the second stage so that he knows he has a good grip on the door. Once he has a good grip on the door, he's going to use his body mass, push, and open up using a tabbing maneuver. After we've tabbed, We then can start spreading. Many times, you'll just pull it right off the nader or the U-bolt. All right, now that we've got the opening opened a little bit more, we can enlarge that opening. He'll continue to burrow in, trying not to de-skin the door, trying to push against a point of strength, which this time will be our nader pin or our U-bolt. And this will eventually rip free of the U-bolt. All right, we've got the, the door to the point where we now can visualize the U-bolt. We're going to take the spreader away we're going to bring the cutters in, and we're going to finish this up. Right. 
and now the rear door is open. We're going to finish off the door removal by taking out the B-pillar and the rear, rear door. How will we accomplish that? Firefighter is going to approach, he's going to lay the cutter on the rocker panel with the jaws open of the cutter going below the hinge. He's going to close it up. Now be aware that the tool will suck into the passenger's compartment. So do not get your fingers caught between the tool and the seat. It will then release and come back out. Once he's made that initial cut, he'll open up the, the draws all the way, remove the tool, come around to the front of the door, and meet the cut that he just made. Now oftentimes we can't make a full cut. So we might have to accomplish it by making a pie cut. We'll see how the initial cut goes. And it appears we've made the, the total cut. He releases it, opens the jaws of the cutter all the way. And he now goes to the top of the B pillar. I'll stabilize the door. And he's going to want to cut along the roof line. So he'll flip the tool upside down, holding it like a baby. Clear. And we still have a little bit of material left, so we'll ask him to come in and finish the cutout. Now remember, we will have stripped before we rip. We want to visualize everything before we cut. The door is now free except for the seat belt. And again, we want to put it paint side down into the warm zone. And so this ends engine company extrication module. Remember directive 241 and the matrix. You've learned in your responsibilities as an engine company that we want to assess the scene, get a good assessment, make sure the fire control is down and that you have scene safety. Remember to balance the scene and stabilize and we also learned how to take glass and remove doors. It's Lieutenant Jerry Jensen saying, be safe out there, make sure everybody goes home.